Just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Kowalski, progress report. We're only 500 feet from the main sewer line. And the bad news? We've broken our last shovel. Right. Rico, you're on litter patrol. We need shovels and find more popsicle sticks. We don't want to risk another cave-in. And me, Skipper? I want you to look cute and cuddly, Private. Today we're gonna blow this dump. Actually, Skipper, today we're gonna be learning all about the Photoshop retouching tools. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the clone stamp tool, the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush, and the patch tool. And I want you to follow along and practice these tools by using this picture at the bottom. So remember to download this. We have to first click the picture, then choose download image. And once it downloads here at the bottom, we do need to click and choose show in folder so that we can drag it from the downloads folder into our OneDrive Triton graphic design unit five. So you're just gonna click and drag that and make sure you've moved it into unit five. And once you see that in unit five, you should be able to head over to Photoshop and open that picture in Photoshop. And it's gonna look like this beautiful lady. Now the very first step in retouching any photograph in Photoshop is to create a brand new layer for any retouches that you may do on your picture. So we're gonna go over here to the layers panel and remember the one that looks like the little sticky note is the button for a new layer. So we're gonna click that and then rename your layer retouches. And we wanna do again, all of our edits on this retouches layer. And that way, if we accidentally over edit or over retouch something, we can go back and fix it without ruining our original picture. Now the first retouching tool we're gonna to take a look at is the clone stamp tool. And that is over here in the toolbox and it actually looks like a miniature rubber stamp. And the clone stamp is going to copy or clone part of an image exactly without you needing to do a whole selection and then do copy and paste. And so we're gonna practice copying the button on this lady's shirt. So first I want you to zoom in onto the lady as close as you can so you can see the button. And we need to change one more thing. We before we start using the clone stamp tool. That is up here on the tool options bar. Right now it says that it should be cloning from the current layer. Well, there's nothing in my retouches layer because that's where I want my fixes to go. So I need to make sure that instead I say that Photoshop can fix things on any layer. And now I'm gonna be able to put my retouches on the retouches layer without ruining the background layer. So if we try to just start painting right here where we might want the button to go, we're gonna get an error from Photoshop that says that we can't use the clone stamp because the area to clone has not been defined. And then it tells us alt click to define a source point. So the very first step in using the clone stamp is to define a source point or sometimes it's called a sample point. And that is the area that you want Photoshop to copy or clone. And we do that by holding down Alt and then clicking on that area. So if I wanna clone this button, I'm gonna press and hold Alt, and I can see that this is gonna work because it turns into a target. Then I'm gonna click on the button because that's the area I want to copy or clone. Now, if I go up here, I do see in my brush, and it's kinda of hard to see because it's white, but inside my brush is a sample of what the area would be cloning. If I moved it over to the black, I see that it's gonna be cloning and it's gonna look like that white spot. So if I wanna add another button up here, I'm gonna start painting and you're gonna see that as I paint, there's a crosshair following below and that's showing exactly what I'm copying and it is doing a direct copy of that button below. So if I started painting all the way over here, all of a sudden I'm directly copying the black because that's where my crosshair is. So the cool thing about doing my retouches on their own layer is that if I accidentally did get too much of that black, I can just hop over to the eraser tool. I can erase the part of the retouch that I don't like, or I could turn on and off that retouch that I just did. The next tool that we're gonna take a look at in terms of retouching is what's called the spot healing brush tool. 
And that looks like this little band-aid over here in our toolbox. And we're going to use the spot healing brush tool to fix very small blemishes like freckles or wrinkles or sometimes pimples. And it is my favorite retouching tool because it's super, super easy to use. Unlike the clone stamp, we do not need to use the alt key to set a sample point. However, we do need to do that same step we did with the clone stamp in terms of sampling all layers so we can put our edits on our retouches layer. So make sure that on your tool options bar up here at the top, you have sample all layers checked. Otherwise, it's not gonna let you fix anything on your background layer. So it's super easy, like I said, to use the spot healing brush tool. The first step is just to make sure that if you're fixing this maybe little spot here, you wanna make your brush as big as the size of the spot or as close to the size of the spot as possible. And then all you do is click and paint over that spot. Now, wherever you see black, that's what Photoshop is gonna fix. And when I let go, it has blended the area around that spot to remove the spot or the blemish. So I can just click over it. And again, it's really best to try to get the spot as close as possible to the size of your brush, because if you're working on maybe removing big spots and you sit here and paint big, huge chunks, it's gonna start to look a little weird sometimes. So go ahead and clear up any of the small spots you're seeing on this lady's face using the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Our third retouching tool combines the best of the clone stamp and the best of the Spot Healing Brush Tool, and it is called the Healing Brush Tool. It hides right underneath the spot healing brush tool. So if you press and hold, it is that second band-aid. And like I said, it combines the clone stamp tool and the fact that you have to set a sample point of what you want your blemish to blend with, but it also paints just like the healing brush tool. So again, the very first thing we need to do is make sure that we are sampling all layers up here on our tool options bar. So under the sample, I'll change it to all layers. And then just like I had to set my source point with my clone stamp tool, I have to do that with my healing brush tool. And right now you'll see it still looks like the button because that was the last time I set the source point. It was when I used alt and clicked the button on the clone stamp tool. So let's say that I am trying to fix these wrinkles by her eye and, and I want it to be the same kind of coloring as her cheek right here. So I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to get that target and I'm saying, yes, I want it to look like this area of her cheek. I'll click that. Okay, now where my brush is, it's showing that's kind of the area it's going to be. And then the second thing is I'm going to size my brush to the size of the blemish or the spot I'm fixing, just like I had to do with my spot healing brush. And then I'm just painting over and it's kind of showing, hey, it's going to blend those colors together while fixing my blemish and imperfection. When I let go. You'll see it's removing her wrinkles, but it's also blending in with that tone of the source image. And I can reset my source image as many times as I want. So as I see as I'm painting over here, I might be getting into the darker area. If I still want it light, I'll just go back. I'll press Alt by another light area. Then I'll keep painting over here, but it's kind of merging those light areas to get rid of her wrinkles. I could go do the same thing over here on this wrinkle. It's gonna get rid of that spot while blending the colors of whatever my source area happens to be. The last retouching tool we're gonna to look at today is the patch tool. And over in the toolbox that hides below the spot healing and the healing brush tool. So if you press and hold on your Band-Aid, it looks like a little patch. And when you click that patch tool, the first thing you need to notice is that on the tool options bar, this is the only retouching tool that doesn't give you the chance to sample all layers. So you have to do the patch tool on your original background layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on the background layer with the patch tool. That's the only downside to this. Now the patch tool 
works by selecting a bad area and then you're clicking and dragging it to a good area that you want to use to patch your bad area with. So to test this out, we're actually gonna practice removing her earring. So we're gonna patch up her earring with a different area of her ear so it looks like she just has a normal ear. Now you would wanna use the patch tool instead of the clone stamp tool or the spot healing brush tool or the healing brush tool in areas of high contrast. And what I mean by that is her earring is really close to the edge of her earlobe and that is a big change in color from the edge of her earlobe. So let's let's say I just went out and I tried spot healing her earring right now. I'm going to go to the retouches layer and I'm clicking and dragging over the earring. Uh, and notice how it created that weird black spot. It's because it was trying to blend it with all the colors next to it. And this happens to be a dark color next to the earring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eraser since I'm on my retouches. I'm going to erase the example that I just tried to do. I'm going to go back to the patch tool and again it sadly doesn't let you do this on its own layer so I have to patch from the background layer and I'm going to just draw my selection around the bad part or in this case the earring and whatever I have selected is considered my source and I'm going to click it and drag it to a good part of the picture and it's going to show a preview in my selected area saying this is what I'm going to merge or patch that selection with. And when you let go, it'll do that blending. And you can do multiple versions of that blending to patch it. And then I could deselect and I could get a little closer or a little smaller and go in and patch and get rid of the earring that way. So some of you might be like, oh, well, I didn't do this on its own layer. And what if I decide at the very end that I actually want to have that earring back and I can't go back in my history panel and I can't erase the patch that I did? There is one way that you can reset edits that you've done in your picture. And that is by using any selection tool and selecting the area that you made an edit to. So I'm gonna select the area of her earlobe. And if I go up to edit and I choose fill, I have the option under filling this selection with history. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna look back and it's gonna be like, I'm gonna fill this with the original history move. So if I click okay, all of a sudden it went back in history and found the original thing that was in that box and replaced it. So that's kind of a way of getting around the fact that the patch tool doesn't offer you to sample all layers. However, I do want you to remove that earring. So go ahead and use the patch tool and remove her earring. At this point, you should have created a new layer in which to do all your retouching edits on. You should have cloned the button on her shirt. You should also have used the spot healing brush or the healing brush to remove all blemishes. And finally, you should have used the patch tool to remove her earring. If you've done all those edits, do a final file save as and change it to a JPEG and go ahead and submit that to Schoology. Skipper. Don't you think we should tell them that the boat's out of gas? Nah, just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave.